Welcome back to The Sacred Life. I'm Shan Vanderleek. Today I'm speaking with intuitive visionary, spiritual coach, and master energy healer, Amira Hall. Amira uses her expertise and skills acquired from her near-death experience to support individuals seeking greater fulfillment in their lives. She is a true transformation goddess. When she's not mentoring and teaching about manifesting miracles, she travels, dances, meditates, and enjoys healthy living. And later on in the conversation, she has an invitation that will take you on the wildest ride you can possibly imagine to Egypt. Ah, welcome, Amira. Oh, thank you. I got the magic carpet fired up with that Yes. I feel buzz in the air. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. It's so glad. I'm so glad to have you here. And before we sat down today, I got quiet and, and pulled a card for our time together, a goddess card. And Anya, leap of faith, came up. And her message is, take a risk and put your heart's true desire into action. And this card shows this woman, this angel, flying through the air, hands up in the air, beautiful sun breaking through the clouds behind her. She has wings and she's wrapped in gossamer. She's just stunning. And I wonder how that card and how Anya resonates with you. Wow, it's profound. I feel, and I've been saying this a lot lately, I found myself saying, yes, I'm riding on the wings of angels. And there's been a big shift in my own life, I would say in the last three to four months. And that's what I've been feeling. I've been feeling the angelic presence. I've been feeling the goddess and the feminine natural ability to attract whatever it is that I desire. I feel that really intensifying. There's an increase in vibration on the planet. It's like a calling. It's like an invitation. It's like a welcoming to remembering mm -hmm. that within ourselves. I have definitely felt more presence, more support, whether it be angelic, ascended masters, or those who have loved me for always than ever before. So definitely, I'm feeling that with you. I received the message not too long ago to launch a virtual group where I would connect with people's loved ones. And to my surprise, what's been happening as I'm a medium, messages from loved ones are coming in, but also the ascended masters and the angels. So there's been sort of like a party on down of the veil becoming lighter and our connections to life on the other side is growing. It's intensifying. The awareness that we exist beyond the here and now and fulfilling our purpose. Why is this happening? Why are we connecting with that? What is it that we're supposed to be doing? How about listening? That's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? <laughs> and sometimes we need to be able to clear energy blocks in order to listen, in order to take action on what we came here to do and who we came here to be. You're so right on that. And a lot of people tell me, well, I, I don't get any signs from my angels or from my loved ones that they're trying to connect with. And it is a matter of being blocked, as you so succinctly said. It is a matter of foreign energy interfering with your flow, with your connection to your higher self, perhaps, or your connection with the unseen world. Or maybe it's just a long line of beliefs that you've been telling yourself unconsciously for a long time. Mm. And I have the gift to see those energetic blocks. And that is where we start. Absolutely everybody, no matter what it is that they're coming to me or reach out for assistance with, it begins with that. And you know where it really shows up is when we're in the womb coming back to the divine feminine. Yes. I like to say this as a metaphorical example. When we come into the human form, we're pure spirit. We're unadulterated. We got a mission. We got a blueprint. We come into the womb as this energy. And all we know is the safety, the warmth, 
the comfort and, right. and the vibration because we are pure love all we know and associate where we came from is love but it's our mother's vibration her frequency and we take that on thinking that's us now for a lot of people to wrap their head around this this is a little bit of a stretch but it's pure energy but unconsciously you're absorbing mother's beliefs feelings her experiences her world and then we're born we're matching our friends and and colleagues and f- extended family father and teachers and we go on with friends and on and on and on and on and we don't realize where this an accumulation this archive of data information experiences of everybody else <laughs> oh my gosh well on that's that's kind of good news because all of what we <laughs> a lot of our struggles aren't us right it's I just spend that- a lot of time <laughs> asking myself who does that belong to or whose voice is that or right. whose opinion is that really right i love to know that when we hit puberty what we're really trying to do unconsciously is release what we are not we're trying to push out mom and dad's energy the big people in our life or the first people that were influencing us and we rebel because we're trying to find that soul's message that blueprint why am i here why am i here i'm different i know i'm different than everybody else that i'm with right we all feel that and we seek out somebody that can understand us because we are different depending on the culture i work with a lot of middle eastern people and hispanic and different cultures the indian culture they stay close together and they are so involved with each other's dynamics and our culture here in the west we have that way to separate but we don't go into finding the the buried treasures so to speak it's a process of separating those energies that aren't us mm. to reconnect with what's already there it's really very simple i don't get involved with telling my clients who and what they should be doing because their soul and their their essence knows what they're here to do sure it's just it, being it, a process of revealing like a sculpture you sure. know when we start to carve let's say from a rock we have to chisel away and then that beautiful sculpture appears when you're working with your clients whether one on one or in a group session where do you begin with clearing energy what kind of practice do you lead them through and can you lead us through a, a small clearing today the first thing i saw was that i don't see the chakra as a static thing and you've probably heard it's a wheel of spinning energy i almost see it as two wheels of energy that are spinning one clockwise one counterclockwise within each other and they're creating this dynamic kaleidoscope of patterns so if you figure that each chakra has got this pattern emerging when i tune into someone's vibration one color or one aspect of that pattern will flash at me or trigger me to where i begin gotcha it's very complex if we want to with our intellect try and dissect this for me it happens very quick it's almost like i get a little video or a collage of starting points like oh i see you know a block let's say when you were 5 years old and someone locked you in a room or shut a door and i see you crying and you can't have what you want so it might be something like that that you know is long forgotten and and seems to not even be relevant to today's issues the first thing we do in all of my training is learning how to be grounded yes 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 and a lot of people talk about this and i mean teachers or mentors but i'm not sure they know really how to be grounded and i use the grounding cord from the base of my spine so i envision a tube or a laser beam or a usb cord and i secure it at the base of the spine the first chakra and i drop it to the where i envision the center of the earth and then what i do is as it's nice and taut i give it a little tug make sure it's anchored there 
Then I give it permission to, in meditation, expand and meet the edge of my aura. So even if we did that right now, the tone of our conversation will get a lot more centered and present. Mm -hmm. And you can maybe feel that yourself as I'm doing this for us. And then even in my daily practice, if I'm washing the dishes, or changing the bed sheets, or getting in my car and driving, I practice being grounded. Mm -hmm. So I'm hooked to the center of the earth. And in meditation, what I do is I activate a little button that I envision or imagine that's activating gravity. And I just begin to invite allow the energetics that aren't mine or that I accumulated or I'm ready to release that are mine just flow away from me down the grounding into the great recycling center. <laughs> yeah. And so it is a practice that it builds with time. It's not something that we're taught. It's not something that feels natural because our spirit wants to fly. Our spirit's very nature is to leave the body because that's what spirit does. Right. So until we are able to remove those blocks, the foreign energy that prevents us from staying grounded, and it allows our spirit to come closer to the body. And what I mean by that is, let's say we have a clock and the body, let's say, is at six o'clock. For, for most of us, our spirit would be at eight or even nine, eight to nine. So the spirit's always working ahead of our body because it goes and it figures out, let's say, oh, I need to call Shan today. So it goes ahead in time to see where we need to go and then it comes back. The idea is to be grounded with our spiritual information that we gleaned ahead of ourselves. Does that mm, make sense to you? Absolutely. Absolutely. So the spirit and body need to come together. But what happens is if people are really anxious, they're too far ahead. Their spirit is running down the road, anticipating nuclear war or, you know, famine and all these things that are hitting us. We need to bring that back and go, what can I do today? What is, what is immediate now? Spirit can go ahead and say how I can prepare as an example, but it still needs to be present because a lot of that is not reality. It's sensationalism. Sure. Right now we're seeing so much overwhelm and hyper awareness. And my goodness, after two years of crazy business going mm -hmm. on for two years, crazy business, divisiveness, intense, crazy. so intense, all the stuff that's been going on, while the majority of us have been just trying to live our lives, love each other, do the best we can, and pray and ground and do our work and hope that it will pass. But in the meantime, everything's changed. There's so much more hyper-awareness and overwhelm. And I know a lot of that has to do with screen time and media and everything that we let in and all of the, just all of these distractions, right? I'd love your take on how we can soothe some of this hyper-awareness. Well, you're absolutely correct. And I see the same things. I think the first thing is understanding, one, being grounded. When we're grounded, we can go, is this scrolling on Instagram really serving me right now? You can have more of an awareness and tune back into, is this productive use of my time? Would I rather be doing making a cake for the kids or or coloring, or doing something that would be soothing to my soul. The one thing that I realize as a super sensitives, empaths, I think everybody's an empath, first of all, because we all have a sense of feeling <laughs> at some level, and there's varying degrees. But what we do is we extend our energy field because we're so compassionate. Nobody's taught us how to have a healthy aura, which would be arm's length around us. So if your aura is so far out there that you're healing your whole city, you're going to lose steam. You're not going to have any energy for yourself. And you won't know where to start. And talk about overwhelm. It won't only be your issues and concerns, but you're taking in everybody else's, which is not your job. Mm -hmm. None of your business. <laughs> we need to learn to bring in the aura, have a healthy 
auric field. What I mean by that is when we have a higher concentration in our aura of our own unique frequency, it becomes a natural decoy or deflector. It becomes a process of learning how to stay in the center of your head, which is your clairvoyant space, to be present, to be grounded, and to be aligned. All the chakras are working together. And that's where not only are we becoming a powerhouse in terms of manifesting, but we can then say, I can send, let's say, a golden rose or a golden ball of energy to those folks suffering and struggling. And I'll stay in my aura because I'm going to better serve them with a a strength and a connection that they need right now versus me getting scattered and lost. Oh, I I love that so much. What one of my practices is to uh, lower my walls and barriers and expand, 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 and make contributions where I can while protecting my field and my physical body. And only making those contributions to beings and bodies who wish to receive it. But then also inviting all of that to come back. <laughs> and zip it back up when I'm not in that space of wanting to make a contribution. What's your opinion of that? I think we're making contributions whether we choose to or not. And I believe that when we have a strong and healthy aura, it's sending out ripples and I'm affecting people that I've never met, seen, or engaged with. And that's why I hold healers and um, light workers is we just need to focus on us. The, the I do believe you will attract, you know, uh, those that you can support and work with. There's no question we're here to help each other and work together in community. But I do feel as much as there is a sense of community, I do feel there's a sense of sovereignty that is really vital right now. Oh, yeah. And being so responsible with our own energy, almost being the word selfish. I mean, I was raised Catholic. So, you know, that's kind of a bad word, right? That's evil. So there's a fine edge here. And I don't want to go down a rabbit hole. But again, I think for women, especially, we need to learn how to be selfish and put ourselves first. Here, here. And do the energy work. And there will be an automatic ripple automatic you don't even have to lift a finger (laughs) when you're Mm -hmm. taking care of you yes and that's this ease and grace this this reverberation that we send the frequency is what those that are ready to receive it that are inviting it will trigger we don't have to see art there's a trick of ego here that gets us tripped up energy just by the nature of raising the vibration it will affect everything. It's not just Ukraine as an example. It will affect everything. It's, yeah, it's just a collective. And right. so I think that ego or our linear mind that wants to dissect or categorize it or target it, I think is a little bit naive. I so we, so then do you think prayer is naive? Well, I like to ask myself th- this question, what makes me think I know what's right for somebody? Okay, let's say, let's use Ukraine. What I would do, because I don't know what the highest good for all of the, all of whoever is experiencing that, you know, event, um, I send golden suns or golden roses. Um, my understanding is the gold is the highest vibration that our physical body can actually um, hold for extended amounts of time. So as that energy permeates that particular field, that I am, I am neutral. I don't Beautiful. have any, Beautiful. any agenda because right. who am I? And I keep, I try to keep myself in check with that. It's not minimizing myself, but I don't, I am not God. I might be a goddess. Okay. But, um, (laughs) and I say that tongue in cheek, it's, it's really keeping my, my human self out of the formula and trying to be as neutral as possible. 
And that's, that's a big, that's the, all the work that I teach is learning how to be neutral, even with our own stuff. And you know, Shan, with the acceleration of the energies on the planet, what I'm seeing is that more and more people's spiritual gifts are opening up. So could it be that more people are giving us messages that they are not aware of? It's pure innocence. I know myself, I'll just be in a conversation with somebody and they just look at me like, how did you know that? It's not like I'm reading them. Right. I'm not even to have no intention of that. But this, you know, their grandmother will just start coming through me and I'll say something that their grandmother would say to them and they, they, they take pause. So this is happening for more and more people that we aren't going to be able to, the, the veil is getting thinner. We can't stop the messages coming in. Right, right. So being not, I guess receptive is one thing, but not being receptive means that we've got some energetic blocks so that we can have these communications. Mm. And, cha- and heal and be um, aware that it's an invitation to shift something. To be more present, dynamic, in the moment, we're growing, we're processing, and we get to let it go. I love, I love the fact that energy is neutral. And, and if, if you've got lots of mom's energy still in your energy field, which we all do, um, great. It's not that mom's an evil ogre. It's just mom's energy. It's neutral. It belongs to her. So I, I teach people how to, like I have two apps in, on my computer screen, one that represents mom, one that represents you. And what we do is we literally drag and drop all of your energy in mom's app or folder and drag it all the way back into yours. Oh, I and love that. Yeah, it's like if you've downloaded a movie or something, you watch, right, that little gauge, and it tells you, okay, we're halfway done. Okay, we're three quarters way done. Okay, boom, it's done. Then we drag and drop all of mom's energy that's in your energy field all the way back to mom. And it's powerful. It's healing. It, it, it gives you, improves and increases your communication and, and your connections. So it, with couples, relationships. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's kids. Healing the, healing the mother wound is yeah. incredibly valuable. Yeah. And you can do that every single day of your life. Mm-hmm. And it'll, it, it, it will take some time. When you think back to the metaphor I gave, we're in the mom's womb for, you know, most of us nine months. But the point of it is, is you're, you've accumulated so much of her vibration, her influence in your early childhood, and all of those patterns that have, like, if you're looking at an iceberg, it's that 90% below water stuff that we're digging deep with. And, you know, and then dad's energy and, you know, on and on. It usually starts, though, you know, in, in, in the work I do with people, like the most recent experiences we are the first to go, it seems. Mm-hmm. And, and mother's energy takes, it seems like, the longest. Yeah. That's been my experience. It doesn't have to be. I right. Mean, Makes you know. sense, though. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fascinating. I absolutely love our conversation. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's juicy. The juicy feminine, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, you know, in the work I've been doing this work for 24 years, and I found this system, the most liberating because going through therapy and years of therapy and not really making headway. And I just got to a point of, I'm tired of talking about it. Let's, yeah. let's do something about it. Let's get it out of here. Right. And I don't want to go through my life with all these grudges or setbacks or restrictions. So that's where I found these tools. It was after my near-death experience where I learned about the quantum field. And that was way back in 1998. And it's so liberating and simplistic. If we just recognize it's just energy, it's just neutral. It's not about anybody being right or wrong, good or bad. (laughs) Right, wrong, good, bad. Let's, I mean, oh, this neutrality is so resonating with me because for most of the humans walking on this planet, it's not neutral. Well, we're living in the 3D reality, exactly. which is, is, is a polarity. It's total polarity. And as evidenced by what we've seen over the last, I don't know, five years, six years mm-hmm. of 
this mm -hmm. vehement right, wrong, good, mm -hmm. bad, this side, that side, this political party, that la 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 la. Ugh. It makes me just just that sound. Ugh. <laughs> well, and we're as we wake up, we're gonna realize that we've all been freaking duped. Yeah. And that's since the beginning of time or like the last 20,000 years. That right, we've, right. It's not just like it started five years ago. Yeah, yeah. We've, <laughs> we've been in this, this void, this amnesia. I, in my book, The Essential Guide to Spiritual Awakening, the, I talk about sleepwalking and that we are waking up. The vibrations are shifting. Call it political, call it geopolitical or, you know, whatever threat or boogeyman is showing up on the on the TV screen this week. It ain't any of that. The bigger macro picture is that we are waking up out of a stupor. Yeah. Humanity connecting to that spiritual aspect of who we are and aligning with the goddess, the, the feminine energy, men and women, we run this feminine energy it is about creation. It is about abundance. It is about the sacred connection to all beauty and love and harmony. And we all want that, I think, at the core. What comes up for you when you think about the phrase walking in beauty? I feel abundant. I feel powerful. I feel it's like an effervescence, a, a, a union of everything that I am. <laughs> and I'm not talking on the outside. I'm talking right. about that feeling that I connect with. It's a gentleness. And you know, when on my walks, there's a part of my path that I take regularly down by the river, and there's a concrete path, and there's grass on either sides. And then there's a portion where it's small little rocks. And I don't like walking on the rocks, because it's so crunchy. And what I realized is that taking in the beauty all around me, I don't want to disturb that essence that I'm feeling. So I, I take myself onto the grass. Mm. And I've been I've been walking lightly and paying attention to how I walk in my apartment, how I walk up the steps, how am I walking? This has been growing for me personally, of being light. Yes, being attentive to how I'm participating and my footprint on the planet and creating that harmony along the way. That's my personal goal and objective. And it, and it starts with, hey, your morning walk mm, I love or that. Every, every step along the way. That leads me to your most favorite divine feminine ritual. I'm sure that walking is a part of it, but what else? For me, of course, meditation. That is the most important thing, I think. I do love my baths. Walking and connecting with, the, with nature and the birds lately, cardinals have been coming to me. My dad comes to me as a cardinal. They show up and it's been regular on my mm -hmm. path over the last few weeks. And so that's my, my hello in spirit in nature. Um, puts a smile on my face. Yeah. And you seem to me, from the outside looking in, to be living a, a sacred ritual. Your life is your sacred ritual. Would that be an accurate assessment? Gosh, and that, that touches me. I thank you. Um, I'll acknowledge that. <laughs> and my, my purpose, I, I'm walking on purpose. Right, yeah. right. And I'm doing the work. It's not always been a cakewalk. <laughs> I'm finally, I think, reaching a phase where could be the crone in me that's stepping into my power in ways that I never thought yeah. possible, perhaps. And yet here you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, well, it's and the beautiful. reason why I bring that forward is because when I asked you that question and, and it kind of caught you off guard, it, I almost giggled because... In my opinion, it caught you off guard because it's the way you live. So how am I supposed to how am I supposed to identify this one or two or three things when being on purpose in, in living life the way that you are, the way that you're choosing to move through the world is your sacred life? Yes. I just mm. never heard it phrased that way. But yeah, <laughs> my intuition is cranked up and I teach people how to access that. 
Because I believe with everything we've been going through, more than ever, this is what we have to rely on. Yes. We cannot rely on media or other people's information. It really requires us to double and triple check ourselves. I think all of us are here to live our purpose. And finding that doesn't have to be complicated. It's being awake is your purpose. It's having your, being connected to your energy and knowing that that is what you are and you have command of it. That's your purpose. Mm. Here's to more people waking up every day. Here's to more people going, oh, wait a minute. I do have choice. Wait a minute. That isn't even my idea that's in my head. Like That's not mine, which gets back to where we started with identifying what's yours and what's not and clearing the energy that it isn't yours or clearing the energy that you've accumulated, taking the time to make that investment in you and in your healing and in your clearing and in your daily grounding and realizing that you are sacred. Oh, that's, that's rich. That's a treasure. Tell me about Egypt. Speaking of treasures, (laughs) (laughs) ancient treasures. I've been back now over a dozen times and I'm organizing, hosting a trip with my co-host, Mary Lamondo. Uh, We are taking a spiritual seekers on a 12 night journey to Egypt. We've labeled it the divine union Mm. and the divine union, the sacred feminine. We will be culminating the 12 nights, the the 14 days through the divine energies of Egypt, um, connecting with the Taurus energy in the great pyramid on the full moon eclipse. Holy. Yeah. All right, you just blew my mind. Why? Because that's going to be so incredibly potent. Yeah. And and so the, the, the importance, I think, of Taurus lines with everything that we've been talking about. We're connecting with our soul codes, our star codes. And the Hattors, which are so much about divine love and healing energy. But this Taurus energy is grounding. So there's a sense of being in everything that we talked about today, this divine beauty and abundance and sensuality, Mm. but in a presence that's never really been anchored, I think, on the planet. You know, the seven Hattors, the seven sisters were, they birthed our souls into existence. That's the, the story behind it. And they bring our soul into a life form through the sound and everything beauty, aromatherapy, um, art, you know, dance, learning about loving ourselves, the cooperation and our interconnectedness in terms of creation and manifesting through the arts, through beauty. So we're going to be activating those parts of ourselves, connecting and remembering more of who we are, why we're here and accelerate those abilities or skills or soul dreams that you have to fulfill here in this body. Where, where can our listeners learn more about this awesome opportunity? Amirahall.com. And at the top, there's a tab that says Egypt tour. Perfect. So it's Amira, A-M-I-R-A-H, H-A-L-L.com. So I am buzzing with energy because Sekhmet, who before the show, you showed me the picture of your artwork, Sekhmet and the Hattors and Isis, they're all aspects of the same divine beauty Mm. goddess Mm -hmm. energy within us. And we are being fired up into remembering our power, stepping into our power. And in your message that you said with Freya is doing something what was it? Adventurous. Unleash um, your adventurous side. Yes. Take, take risks and be daring. Yes. Oh my gosh, I got chills as you. And saying. your card for our conversation was also take a risk and put your heart's desire into action. So both of those cards, Freya came up for the month of April 
and then Anya came up for our conversation today. So there's definitely a pattern here, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> inviting us to yep. our boldness and to take risks and be daring and the divine feminine. Yes. Yeah. So Mary has been to Egypt many, many, many times. She lives there part time. Uh, she's an Egyptologist and an astrologer. We have a dynamic trip plan. And so we're going to have times of private times of channeling and meditation and, and really clearing the blocks that we have ourselves to be able to step into this divine beauty that mm. we're holding within ourselves. Wow, uh, men, awesome. men and women. It's not just a feminine in terms of female bodies, but right. the feminine energy within males as well is being mm. activated. Yes, yeah. and the more the more we see, the more people who are balanced, masculine and feminine energy. What a world we will be living in. The giving and and receiving. And receiving, yes. Yeah, you know, yes. just being in the dance of flow and 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 living in abundance, like really, really owning it, not just mm -hmm. saying affirmations till you're blue in the face, but it's like being in the matrix of abundance. I'll this is join, a very I'll, different thing. <laughs> I'll join you there, Amira. <laughs> okay, we're in it right now. <laughs> I wanna, we don't have to be into the future. Let's have yeah, it right now. We're in it. We're yeah, in the, we're yeah, in the yeah, circle. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much for sharing this conversation with me today. I've enjoyed you, your company, your brilliance, your beauty. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shan, with all my heart and soul. That was Amira Hall. Learn more about Amira at amirahall.com and be sure to register for her free Stress Buster guided meditation. And you'll also want to check out her new release, An Essential Guide to Spiritual Awakening. She also has a new coloring book called Vibe High and Watch Magic Unfold. Again, that's amirahall.com. 